Welcome back to another episode of Black Caution. I am Joshua Washington, and as always, I want to invite you all to participate in this real conversation that the fellas are having, all right? So with no further ado, let's get into it. Black Caution. All right, welcome back to another episode, and I can't believe this is almost done. We've been talking here for a couple hours now, and it's been just great content, real men, real conversation, black caution. And so the next subject that we haven't hit yet that I think is important is the faith talk. I've heard a little bit of some you know, crumbs of faith coming from you know, a few of you all, and as a man of faith, this is important to me, so I brought my own question to the party this time, and I wanted to ask you all this. When it comes to just faith in general, if you could give advice about how communities and churches can promote success more among black men, what advice would you give them? What can churches do better to, to help create room for black men? Because there's not a lot of black men in church right now. Um, what I love about my church, my pastor is huge on life application. I think in the black church, we do all this hoopla, rah-rah, preaching. They lead emotionally, but as far as strategy, they have nothing to know how to win the fight. And what my pastor does is he, he, he takes scripture, he tells us a story, he shares us a story, and he makes us feel connected with the story, but then he gives us the tools to fight in the front line when we go out and we face our demons or that Goliath. And I think the churches, the church today have to, in order to grab black men to come in, we got to meet their needs where they are and give them the tools and show them where the tools came from. Hmm. Because that's just building disciples. Jesus was, Jesus was just incredible when it came to networking, hmm. building a network team. People called it a pyramid scheme yeah, back in the day. He was the ultimate recruiter. Come on. But he knew how to meet the needs of the people. What did he do? He got, he got bread and fish and fed them. And then he preached. Mm. I think it's backward. We're preaching, judging, casting stones, but we ain't feeding them with no bread. Okay. Mm. So that's how I view it as far as what the church can do better to reach black men and what the church should do better as far as building the community to where black fathers, black men like us would come and and see the faith in a whole different perspective just as the gospel shows us. How important is it though? Is it even important for black men to be in that community? Very. Very. I'm going to get from around I, I, I think it's important because me growing up, when I, when I went to church, I'd never seen black men in there. It was older, older men. Like, you'd think they were probably on their deathbed. <laughs> <laughs> Passing the offering plate. No, yeah, exactly. Um, Deacon Brown. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you only seen that kind of culture in it. And I think that's what deterred a lot of people from going to church because they wasn't exposed to seeing, you know, cool young men in there. So it was just like, I, I didn't want to go to church because there's nobody in here like me. I can't relate to nobody like me. And in order, I, this is just my opinion, in order for the, the, the church to kind of bridge that gap, I think you got to give, put the spotlight on people who's having, you know, some type of success hmm. in different areas in life and letting them speak. That's gonna be able to capture more people, um, just giving them that platform, let, letting them use the church platform to you know, kinda of relate what they have going on in life. And just like you said, giving them life skills. Like people wanna know life skills and how, how can they use it? In church, you know, just like you said, we, you know, we going hooting, hollering, this, this, and that, this, which is great. I love worship, I, I, that's, that's my thing. But when you leave there, 
how is that going to translate to you in the real world when you got real life happening to you? When you got, you know, your, your child in the back seat about to flip out the back seat out, out the window when you got these bills coming up. What are you going to do? Yeah. Right. <laughs> like that's I, I think that's like kind of the. So, so what, what turns y'all off the most right now, you think? Or what you think? What do you think turns men off the most right now when it comes to church community? It's, it's not enough honorable soldiers. And when I say that, meaning the, they pretty much are hypocrites. They do one thing inside of the church, and they go outside the church and do the exact opposite. Mm. And you got other ones looking at them like, wait, but you told me you go to church on Wednesday night, Bible study Tuesday night, <laughs> you know, youth service. Thursday night is, you know, men date. Friday night is women date. And then we run into, Saturday, the, we run into each run other in the strip club on, on Saturday. Saturday. <laughs> and then you end up crying your eyes out on Sunday. Yeah. Like, it, it gives them false hope. So they, they really don't you know, indulging that because you're not being authentic, you're not being real. Uh, so you think, you, you, what I'm hearing is, you all are also saying that if men who are already in the church, maybe young and maybe are there, would be more authentic about where they're at in their walk, and the good and the bad, that that would attract more. And, yeah. the, and also show, be, that's on oh, both sides. Yeah. yeah. And also being more intentional. How so? Um, you know, just... When you when you're having a conversation with conversation with someone, you don't need to first thing is preach the sermon or don't do you that. know share exactly. anything. It's just yo, just have a conversation. The fruit on your tree should already rep show them exactly. where you're from exactly. or what 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 grounds you. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And the other thing I would say too is, man, some women make it bad for men to come to church. Okay, here we go. Go ahead. Well, yeah, yeah, I said yeah. something. What, I ain't saying all the doors. Okay. There you go. What is it, bro? There you go. Play it around again. What is it? I ain't right. gonna lie because you know me. I'm always out, right? I'm always meeting people, and they're like, "Yo, man, you so different, man." Man, last time I went out, I went to church with the girl. She wanted me to be perfect. I'm like, what do you mean she wants you to be perfect? She wants you to be Jesus. She wants you to be Jesus. She wants you to be. <laughs> she wants you to be the pastor, the usher. She wants you to look like what she sees on every Sunday in front of her. So she doesn't give time for God to cultivate him like God cultivated her. Mm. So now she want him to wake up at five in the morning and pray. And he's still trying to figure out, well, how do I pray? Mm. So women, some women put pressure on men. And those men are like, I don't even want to deal with that. I'd rather just deal with what I'm doing with because you're trying to turn me into something that I don't even have an understanding of. Wow. You know, so th and that's the perspective I was just coming from. Like I was trying to. It's the huh? pressure. It's the pressure. Yeah, pressure, I'm pressure. pressure. Just ushering them properly, ushering the ones that don't know, that haven't been in that type of environment. Yeah, yeah. If you usher them the right way and not, you know, try to be. Oh, I'm a brother. Right. <laughs> Let me lay hands on you, boy. Yeah. I'm sick. Lay hands on me. Nobody you know? want. Nobody want to hear that all the time. Yeah. yeah. Just get. Just give them. You know, your experience. I feel, you give them your experience. You real authentic. And they see how you're moving, and they see it's working for you. Obviously, yeah. it'll, it'll, it'll follow. Got to be relatable. Proof is on the tree. Yeah. Now, with that, with that in mind, though, we acknowledge that there is a challenge there in, in men, specifically black men in church. So my question is, how is that affecting faith in God overall? How do you all, from what you're seeing in your own life, how is that impacting faith in God? I believe that because a lot of people... They look at others that are doing so well and their failures that they're having, they feel like it's all because God don't love them. God not looking out for them. And it's not that because everybody's road is different. You're not going to have, the, all of us have different paths. Yeah. All of us have different paths to success. All of us had a different path from school when we were all in school together. But at the same time, we knew that we had faith in ourselves to finish, to get the job done to walk that walk, to be encouraged by each other, to say, hey, just seeing you every day makes me want to be here every day. Wow. That's deep, man. So seeing somebody, that's crazy. I never thought about it like that. It's like actually seeing somebody's relationship with God can be, it can make you feel inadequate. It's like, it's like the child, you feel like they, they, the other child's the favorite child. Mm -hmm. and you, don't get, you don't get no love. Don't that's, get no that's, love. That's, that's deep, man. What else? You hit me on that one. <laughs> yeah, that, that's, yeah that, I never that thought about a, it like that, bro. That was a yeah. teaching lesson for me. I'm yeah. like, that's real though. That bro. was a good perspective. That's real. Like, I, I, if you, so how can someone who who is just coming up about on that knowledge and that revelation of yo, my relationship can actually, you know, hinder that one? What can we do about that? I think it's just simple. I mean, I mean, and I say it not 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 in a way like, oh my God, you could just no. 
it's more like walk with them. <laughs> like, be loyal to what you know God has given you to plant in that person. Don't be loyal to their platform. Don't be loyal to who you know they can become. Be loyal to who they are, right? You got to be, you got to know that this person, when they open up to you, they are naked and ashamed. Mm. And they're trying to figure out how do I take what you've been studying and how do I clothe my spirit with that? How do I become that tree that doesn't have to be cursed by society because it doesn't seem as though I'm producing anything? So we, got just, we just got to learn how to walk with people today. People are asking us to walk with them, love them. And even though they have holes, that doesn't necessarily mean that they're not able to be put back together. There's a lot in there, bro. You, you mentioned some things. And I, I don't want you, if you're watching this, to get caught up in the, the spiritual jargon. So when you not. talk about... You, 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 you almost, you got <laughs> lost. We don't want you catching one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't want you to get lost in, in, in that. But when you mentioned about being naked and ashamed, I think that's exactly what T was talking about. Like, to see you all over here, it seems like you're buttoned up, you know, you all clothed and put together. But meanwhile, I'm over here and I'm dealing with some stuff. And, and it's hard to believe in that moment that God loves me as much as he loves you. Right. Like, that God, that God loves me in my shame as much as he loves you. And some people see it that way. It's sad, but it, you know, it that way. You know, I love that Justin Bieber, and I don't know if you've seen the concert with Justin Bieber, Chandler Moore, and Tori. Oh, my God. It was amazing. But to see how vulnerable Justin Bieber were in that moment in front of his audience professing the name of Jesus and saying how valuable Jesus been in his life and to see Chandler and them walk with him through a journey that other people would be like, oh, this is the music he's saying. Oh, this is the type of artist he is. They don't look at Justin Bieber as the artist and you can tell. Disci discipleship today doesn't look like how Jesus did it because Jesus spent time with these individuals. When he went into Zacchaeus house, he spent time. Even people were trying to figure out why you going into this, this thief house. So the minute Jesus stepped into Zacchaeus house, what does he say? No, Lord, I'll give all that back to the people of what I took because Jesus brought something different. He brought relationships. He brought transparency. And if you're looking for a church, Ramsey's going to open his in the room. <laughs> He'll be open in Nicoe, Florida. Pass the collection plate around. Yeah, yeah two, it'll yeah. be two Logic services. <laughs> they may all start late, but they're going to start at some point. <laughs> nah, but that's, that's real, though, bro. I yeah. think um, I want to I wanna, I, I, I wanna hit the nail on the head. So a lot of y'all are talking about a certain group that we haven't mentioned yet. But it sounds like you're talking about those overcritical, you know, people who, who are people of faith but they're so overcritical that there's no room for anybody else. So let's speak directly to it. What would you say to those folks who are the critical Christians or the, or the critical believers? What would you say to them? At one point, you weren't all clothed and put together. You were naked. <laughs> so don't, don't look, at, look down upon someone that, you know, hasn't gotten to where you are, hasn't reached your level, because there's levels to everything. Yeah. <laughs> because you got, you got the club, you got the VIP room. <laughs> and then you got the boom boom yeah. 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 I just yeah. said it, it's just levels to it and they haven't reached that level some people on, on, on speed dial with Jesus right now and that's because they have that connection other people haven't been ushered into that or how to speak like you said how to pray yeah. I don't, they don't even know what words to say when I first learned how to pray my first couple words were thank you I just wanted to thank him yeah. Yeah. and then as time grew on I understood not to ask for nothing but just you know embrace him in my everyday life. Yeah, that's good, man. I think, I think we, what people have to understand, it's evolution of people that's coming in. There's a different type of Christian that's coming into the, the church home. That's like, real. it's not going to be the buttoned down everyday person. Now it's Christians with tattoos and, you know, it, it's a different genre of people. And Stories. You got, and yeah, yeah, exactly. So I think you have to be more receptive to that part and not just be uh, uh, blinded to you know, what's really going on because, you know, older church people in the church, they, you know, you can't come to church with no jeans on. You can't do this. You can't nope. do that. You can't wear those shoes. And you better not get up out of that seat without this right exactly. here. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So I, I think you just got to have an open mind to what's what's going on and, and being able to present God to somebody that's that's like me or, or that's like 
uh, a, a white man with tattoos all over his face. Just know that God loves everybody. Being being that 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 type of uh, person, receptive to it, I think that's 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 huge. And stop having them mean ushers, cause some ushers are mean. <laughs> them, uh, some ushers are mean. They don't want to give you no peppermints. They don't want to let you walk in the aisle you want to sit in. Hey T, give me that gum. <laughs> oh, oh, you know now. what? You know what? And I, I, I'm, I'm going back. I need to. We going back to the first episode. Cancel this. I would be perfectly fine if we cancel all praise breaks across all churches right now. Oh, let's, let's just, let's just oh, do no. away oh, with all, and I know, he, he comes yeah, to hate mail. He, 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 he comes to hate mail. We canceling all, all, all praise breaks. Uh, I didn't say that. No, listen. I, I ain't say you that. You can't, I you can't be having I, a praise break I ain't say that. and then be cussing everybody out in the I, parking lot, bro. Yeah. You know, he's, he's absolutely right. That's, you can't, you can't. that's what happens, though. Yeah. That's yeah. what happened. That's what deter others from doing it. Yeah. I'm like, dang, you you just in here and then now you cursing me out. Like, how golly yeah. is that? That's Sister Bella. Yeah. 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 That's Sister Bella, man. <laughs> <laughs> Sister Bella gonna give it to you. Hey, listen. Mm, yeah, right. Bring it. <laughs> you know, here's why I say that. All jokes aside, I think there's something wrong with having all these emotional experiences. I think right now, a lot of what goes on in terms of people who aren't in the faith off is that there's so many emotional experiences, but there's not a lot of substance, bro. Like, there needs to be, like T was saying, you can't be going to Bible study on Tuesday, you know, youth, youth service on Wednesday, Thursday, and then there's no real fruit. There's no real character when it comes to your, your actual, like, life and your walk, bro. That will be more counterproductive and more harmful to a non-believer uh, than someone else who, and someone else, just period. So I think, just for now, let's cancel all, all the praise breaks. <laughs> How about y'all get in a circle and get to know your brother across from you? Get to know your sister across from you. I bet right now if we did a poll, most people who go to church don't even know what the person beside them is struggling with. Mm. That over the last 12 months, you can't, even, you can't even name one thing that the person who sits you know, in the same vicinity as you is going through. Mm -hmm. But we can, we can get up and we can, we can praise break with them, but, but never really connect. And I think that's at the root of what we need more of Thanks. in the church. Right. I, 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 I would definitely agree with you. And I always tell people who feel like they're all the way saved. I say, well, if God was to put a projector on the wall, my thoughts and yours, who would be the worst? Hmm. Who would be the worst? We both, God looks at us the same way. Whether I backslid five years ago and you've been in church for five years, because sometimes you can get stuck in your tradition and you ain't growing. And we in the black church, once again, we do traditional things that they, they build their own laws within the church. And they use those laws against you to make you feel like you're an outcast. What did Jesus tell to the Pharisees? Well, who do you say that I am? Because at the end of the day, it, 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 it's understanding that at the end of the day, we don't have that type of relationship for you to know who I am. And we need to have that relationship. If we know how that person struggled, then we'll know how to pray for their deliverance. Mm. And that's just the truth. Facts. Yeah, yeah, I think so too, man. And uh, that's a good conversation, y'all. It's God's call. Yeah, yeah, we, we don't get yeah. a chance to talk about faith a lot, uh, just us as men. So I really appreciate that. I think um, hopefully you got something out of it. And I'd love to hear your feedback in the comments, what you think. What are some things, that was a great question by Courtney. What are some things um, that can be done that, that, the, that the church can do to help Make make more room, man. Make more room for the for the Justin Beavers, for the people who are on the corner selling dope but want a better life, and, and would be open to it if you would just you know be able to walk with them and, and not judge them. So uh, hopefully you found that helpful, and uh, we'll see you on the next one, man. Hey, listen. Thank you so much for watching. Before you leave, make sure you like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so that you don't miss an episode. We want you to participate in this real conversation. All right. So we'll see you next time. Black caution.